full-time manager is currently on the witness stand. He's been outlining the charity work done by his client. The athlete was found guilty of the culpable homicide of Riva Steenkamp last month, but he was cleared of murder. Let's go live to my colleague, Karen Giannone, in Pretoria, outside the courtroom. Karen. Hi Geeta, the court has just uh, come back in session after tea and the same witness, uh, Piet van Zale, is under re-examination by Barry Rue, that's the defence counsel. Piet van Zale has had a, a tough morning of it under cross-examination by Hedy Nell, the prosecutor, who has trying to paint Oscar Pistorius as a man who carried out charitable work, as uh, Piet van Zale had described all through yesterday, but only within the remit of being a very successful uh, corporately sponsored uh, and very high profile individual so that the charity work wasn't as altruistic perhaps as uh, Pete Van Sale was trying to make out yesterday. That's the uh, prosecution trying to uh, create that picture of Oscar Pistorius that uh, a lot of it was also about corporate sponsorship and image. Uh, so uh, Defence Counsel Barry Rue is now uh, re-examining his, his witness. Let's talk to Brenda Wardle, who's been watching this uh, all morning with me. Brenda, what exactly is the purpose of this very meticulous questioning over various charitable events? Well, uh, the defence tried um, to a great extent to paint uh, Oscar Pistorius as this charitable person. Obviously, the state through Gerinal doesn't uh, entirely agree with that, and he went to a very, very great length. And the most important thing about mitigation is there must be a nexus between the evidence which is led in mitigation and the, the sentence, the, the sentence that the defence wants uh, the court to ultimately pass. Now, these are all, these all relate to Oscar's charitable work prior to him committing the offence. I think it's common cause, it's out there, it is known, we're not really helping the court much. And mitigation and aggravation are supposed to be brief to the point in order to guide the court. But I think we are slowly uh, but surely getting there. So this is defence witness number three in mitigation of sentence. Yes. Uh, what will the state, the prosecution, try to do? Well, the prosecution is going to try and get the harshest uh, sentence uh, permissible, so they will come in with aggravating uh, factors, possibly even witnesses, and, and I hope they don't bring any dubious witnesses. What I mean by dubious is that witnesses that can be torn apart, uh, because Barry Rue will be afforded an opportunity to cross-examine those witnesses, so no one who's just going to mess up the aggravation by the state because at the end it boils down to credibility of that witness and whether or not the court is going to be swayed so if you for example bring in someone if we look at an example of Samantha Taylor, I don't know whether she will be called in. That's uh, his ex-girlfriend. His ex-girlfriend. What she said on the stand and what she's been saying to the media and what is reported in the book, totally contradictory. And I hope he's not going to go down that route. Brenda, thank you very much. We must leave it there. And uh, so we're expecting more of the arguments, more of the cross-examination to continue, uh, at least for the rest of today also into tomorrow and then perhaps we can expect the sentence back to you Gita. Karen thanks very much indeed speak to you soon if you want to get more all the very latest live updates Karen is on Twitter uh, she is at uh, Karen BBC Andrew Harding is in side court he's at BBC H Andrew H and also at Nomsa and Maseko Nomsa also watching developments very closely let's catch up with what's happening in the world of